Okay, let's play with random forests. I'm going to use this data set called car seeds that basically is a, a data set containing information about sales of child safety seeds in 400 different stores. So basically we want to predict this variable. This is a categorical variable uh, that tell us if, if the sales in a, in a given population is higher than $9,000. So we have different features. We have the competitor's price in that location, the average income in that location, the amount of advertising in that location, the population size in the location, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you can read this more carefully. You can download actually this script in GitHub. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So we have 11 variables. One is the categorical variable we want to classify with a random forest. That means that we have uh, 10 features. Some of them are numerical, some of them are categorical features. Okay, we can take a look at inside. We don't have any NAs, so so far so good. So let's do some, some splitting of the data. I'm going to use 80% for training and 20% for testing as usual. And I'm going to use cross-validation with a tenfold cross-validation. So don't stick to this. I'm going to use 10 as usual, but you can play a little bit with, with different values here. Okay, but let's run with this. So again, this is one of the reasons I love Carrot. So in Carrot, you just have to change the method. So I'm going to try to fit high against all the other variables in the data set. I'm going to use the training data set, random forest using this cross validation, and I'm going to set the, the number of parameters that I want to tune to 50. Okay? There is something interesting here. Remember that with random forest, the variable that we try to use is called mtry, and mtry tells us how many variables are we, are we going to use in each step of the branch. And here we're saying, okay, you can only use 10. So why are you telling me to use 50? And this is because in, you know, data frame, we only have 10 features out of 11. Okay. So despite the fact that I'm using, I'm telling to use 50 uh, different parameters, a random forest is smart enough to tell us, okay, the most that I can do is use just 10 of them. Okay. That said, let's take a look at the fit. So here we go. So we have tried different, different parameters and let's plot this. Oh, and this is kind of suspicious. So when you see this sort of uh, accuracy accuracy plot, uh, you have to be skeptical. Why is that? Because as you can see, the range is not that large. So this is kind of misleading because this is accuracy of 81% and this is 82 point something percent. But you have these wiggly ups and downs. So let's take a look at this fitting. So let's use fit results. And here we go. So in principle, the choice is mtry equals two, but as you can see here, uh, the, the, the accuracy is 82.9% plus and minus 0 0.09. And if you take this variable, okay, let's take this, and I sum the standard deviation, this is statistics 101, and I take the same um, with a minus. As you can see, all of them, are basically in all of the variables here are in the range 0 0.74 to 0 0.91 so this means that we cannot tell which one is the best choice okay so i wouldn't be so trustful that m try equals 2 is the best one okay so so it's interesting that you analyze this sort of things because you cannot tell that the best choice is 2 okay okay let's move on a little bit let's do some predictions again remember that this is the accuracy of the training data set this is around 80 percent not bad and another interesting thing, thing that we can do with random forests and decision trees is take a look at variance uh, variable importance variable importance and in this case okay the most important variable is the price uh, that makes a lot of sense is things are expensive you're not going to buy them also the age of the population that also makes sense because if you're in a population in which you don't have any kid of course, you don't need safety seats for the for children. The other thing that is interesting here is the self location. And again, if you take a look at the description here, basically you have three levels, bad, good and medium location. And this is interesting that that means that if if in general, the cars, the, the location of the safety seat is not very comfortable, you're not going to buy a safety seat. OK, so this is also interesting. Also, advertising the budget of the, uh, the location is going to make uh, an effect. And then the other variables you can see they are that the the influence of those variables is dropping down. So again, so far so good. 
But again, going back to this plot, uh, this tell this is telling me that maybe playing with the variables. Remember that in random forest we are doing a couple of things. One is bugging, meaning that we are bootstrapping the data set in order to train uh, different trees and then compare the trees. And the other thing that we are doing is playing randomly with the number of predictors. So basically here I'm saying that the number of predictors is no, not so important. So probably traditional uh, decision trees with bugging would produce a similar result as, as random trees, okay? A random forest. So let's do that. Let's take again the same data set and let's train by using a decision tree. Okay, let's do some predictions. As you can see, training is much faster than random forest, of course. Uh, let's take a look at accuracy, and accuracy is not so high. So what's the difference between random forests and random trees? It's a couple of things, bugging and uh, some resuffling, let's say, the number of predictors. So as the difference between random forests and um, decision trees in terms of accuracy is so large, this means that what is mattering most is the training data set. So probably the, the, the training data set is so, I would say it has a lot of outliers, and those outliers is going to make a huge influence in, in the decision tree. So the decision tree is not so good. That said, let's take a little bit about all the stuff. So as you can see here, complexity parameter is maximized around there. And let's plot this. And again, if you go back to this plot in terms of variable importance, price, age, and self-location were the most important ones according to Random Forest. And you can see a similar conclusion here for the decision tree. So basically, if the location if the location of the of the safety seat is not good, let's say this is hard to understand, but it's not zero, so it means it's comfortable. Basically, 80% of the time you're going to buy the safety seat. Otherwise, you have to decide the price. If the price is not above a given threshold, meaning that this is not very expensive, then 77% of the time in which the location is not good, you're going to buy that. And otherwise, you're not going to buy it. So the most important variable according to the decision tree is the location and then the price. And this is kind of consistent with this analysis for the random forest. But remember, random forest provides higher accuracy. It's much higher than this, I know, modest 76%. And the second thing that random forest give us uh, in a more consistent way is variable in feature importance. Uh, which variables are more relevant to our analysis? In this case, price, age, self-location, and uh, probably advertising. You can do the same with the decision tree. And as you can see, it's much more radical. So basically, it's dropping all of these observations. And, and the reason why is because training, in the case of the decision tree, is going to drop out a lot of important variables. The good thing about random forest is not accuracy by itself, which is actually really good, but also the way in which it shuffles the information and the variables in order to be I know, let's more, more flexible than decision trees and that is going to give us a better description of the data.